Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? Hey, don't, I learned a long time ago, don't underestimate nobody. You think you found you a mark or a target? You could end up being the target. Okay? Yeah, when he, look, I'm from Texas. In Texas, you see no trespassing signs everywhere. <laughs> okay? Yeah, when he opened up my... What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. I, I can't do it. We'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! All right, Michael in the building. Oh, <laughs> All right, man. So you said, sure. uh, so you, sure. said you just came from... Uh, from Florida and brought it all the way up to uh, what Michigan? Yeah, yeah, up here, up here in Michigan. Uh, yeah, to drop, drop off, drop off some juice. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Well, oh wait, you said some juice? What from uh, from from Florida finest? There's there's a juicery down down the way around. No, uh, actually, that's uh, simply a simply brand. Out oh, of, simply. Uh, uh, Aub okay. Aub 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 yeah, Auburndale, Auburndale, Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah, the place, uh, I, the the place where I'm dropping off at is right around the corner from a from a juicery called uh, Florida's Finest. You you hip to that? Oh yeah, we go down there all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, man. Uh, so you reached out to me uh, late night yesterday, and uh, you said that you had a you had a you had an interesting event that occurred at a at a fuel island man uh what's what's going on what happened yeah yeah it's uh you know i'm going on 10 years you know in this game and this was like a first for me but at the end there's a very important moral to this story okay you know i know i know i know i know this is something that we all experienced but anyway i stopped at a, a love's truck stop in kentucky and uh you know i pulled into the, the fuel island bay there and uh, you know, I, if some are familiar. I don't know if some some of the old school drivers they usually don't do it, but uh, you know, the newer school drivers, the drivers that embrace technology a little bit more, they use the uh, the app to you know to go ahead and do your fuel transaction. And I was sitting there at the fuel island uh, doing my getting ready to do my transaction. It was running a little slow because you know how the signal, cell phone signal, can be at some of these loves. Okay. Now there's a guy in the fuel alley next to me. Now just just keep in mind he parked in the fuel alley next to me. And while I'm doing my transaction, he knocks on my door. And I'm like, "Can I help you, sir?" He's like, "Well, uh, you need to uh, move your truck up because there is people that need the fuel." I said, and I just looked at him. I said, "Sir, uh, you need to mind your fucking business." Cause you don't know what I got going on here and have a nice day. Well, this gentleman proceeded to open up my door. Okay. Wrong move, wrong move, wrong move. First of all, he shouldn't have came and approached me. Second of all, he opened up my door. Cause that's when I feel like there was a threat. Uh, I had to take care of. So I got out and I two pieced them. And after I got through putting that work on him, he was apologizing, copping, please, talking about, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I have respect for you, but you cursed at me. I said, well, you could have walked away. <laughs> and But now, you, know, you got a, a knot outside your head, okay? Now, the moral of the story, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you truckers know out there, leave people at the fuel island alone. What I do when I go to a fuel island and somebody's in front of me, and they're not, whatever they're doing, I wait <laughs> until they get out the way. And like I said, in the funny part, when I began the story, this gentleman was already parked and was getting his fuel. So he's, instead of pumping his fuel, he decided he just wanted to come over there and be a Ken or a Karen or whoever he wanted to be and get into my business. Okay? Leave people at the fuel island alone. <laughs> Mm. You know, that's the best thing I could tell y'all. Mm. You know, that's, that's and, the moral of the and story. If, and if, if, yeah, just just leave people alone because these days people are carrying guns, <laughs> okay? And uh, you don't know what they got. You don't know what they're going through. And sometimes people break down in the fuel island. So don't be going step into somebody with all guns blazing. I've been there, too. Like, oh, man, I wish this guy here got out the way. I need the fuel. Okay, you to go to another pump or just wait. <laughs> it is not worth it. It's not worth your safety. 
approaching anybody these days. Well, so that's, that's a moral of the story. Well, Mike, man, first thing first, I, I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me and uh, wanted to come on and share your your story and everything. And look, man, it's like everybody that's that's on social media, that's doing social media, they they let social media uh, change the way they are now. It's like you uh-huh. you you're in the fuel island because that's where majority of shenanigans happens. Here's somebody uh-huh. that's 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 supposed to be minding their business, doing what they supposed to be doing. But yet they want to come over here to you with their camera out and all like that and, and, oh, and try to yeah. and, and try to put you on blast because you're you're in the uh-huh. fuel island, you're in the fuel line up under their up under their assumption that you're blocking it and you're just probably taking your thirty minute break or whatever the case. But you're exactly uh-huh. right. You don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I could be broke down, I could be sick, I could be in the bathroom throwing up. Or just like you, I could be in my truck setting up my app. I mean, setting up the fuel through the app. And yeah, I right. I, I just got hip to technology. So shout out to my uh, company for kind of like, hey, have you tried putting the card in the app? I was like, no. I mean, I've been out here for close to eight years, and I never, with the exception of of the showers and everything but i never put i never thought of getting the fuel through the app but yeah now now i'm all i'm all over it <laughs> and I, I know how right, right. i know how slow depending on the area the connection can be trying to set that up um right. but bro yeah, right. so you say this man instead of just trying to talk to you through the through, through the window, and then you told him what you told him, and he didn't get uh-huh. the hint. He actually opened up the door like what he thought you was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know what? Hey, don't. I learned a long time ago, don't underestimate nobody. You think you found you a mark or a target? You could end up being the target, okay? Yeah, when he – look, I'm from Texas. In Texas, you see no trespassing signs everywhere. <laughs> okay. Yeah, when he opened up my door, he was trespassing. You know, and that's when I I felt threatened and I you know, I was taught you eliminate the threat. You know. And you know, I I wasn't proud of, of putting them things on them, but bro, hey, you got to understand, I have a family I got to go home to. And when you and that's what I told him. I said, when you open, you don't go around, you shouldn't be going around opening up people's doors. <laughs> you know. Yeah, uh, because I read I have some hurt feelings and walk away and, and walk away breathing, <laughs> you know. And I I feel what you're saying about social media, man. Actually, I've seen guy posting some videos on YouTube approaching people at uh, fuel islands, and I'm I was thinking to myself, yeah, I'd be glad nobody beating your ass getting in their business. But yeah, <laughs> you know, just leave people at the fuel island alone. You know, <laughs> that's the best thing. That's why you never see. Yeah, that's why you never see loves employees or. Or pilot flying J employees going out there confronting anybody. That's why they have that pre-recorded message. Please pull your truck up to the the, the line so other you know people can fuel. They ne- you never see an employee come out there, and they probably tell them, "Do not go out there and confront no driver about pulling up because it's just not worth it." I I've seen a few uh, loves employees uh, do that. I mean, they'll come outside if if you're in a fuel island for more than uh, for more than a long time. Then one of the employees uh-huh. they'll they'll come outside. They'll knock on the door and they'll say, "Hey, please go and park or whatever the case." But if you're in a fuel island. Uh, if you're on the field island for more than the proper time, I guess, and I, I don't know, I, I don't know if there is a proper time. Like, I mean, I I know it takes maybe about 15, 20 minutes to to fuel, and then maybe about an extra five five minutes or so just to go in to get your receipt, use the bathroom, grab something to eat, and then come back out and, and bounce. Uh-huh. I mean, that's, I mean, if that's proper 
proper time. I mean, that that could be considered proper etiquette. But yeah, like I said, I mm-hmm. I've seen drivers take showers in a in a in a fuel island. They they oh, take their breaks in the fuel island. But but these but these occurrences is when nobody's in the fuel island. You like like there there's nobody in the fuel island. They'll, those type of occurrences I see. But yeah, I, I can understand if if uh, if the truck stop is super busy, like some of these pilots and and loves are, they they could get to the they could get to the point of 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 furious. You know what I'm saying. So maybe if the if he would have just came up there and said, "Hey," um, he probably could have came and said something else. But. But or nothing, yeah, or nothing at all, Not, nothing at all. That that's that would have been, that would have been better, especially if you're already in the fuel island fueling. So that's none of your business. But if maybe the truck driver behind behind you probably would have came up, would have probably would have been a different conversation. Hey, I'm behind you. How much longer? Yada yada yada. But this this dude's already in the fuel island, already getting fuel, and he decided to come over and try to put his nose in 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 things in in your situation again about social media, man. Like I said, it seduce mm-hmm. it seduce everyone yep. to record, no matter who you are, man. And sometimes trying to get that trying to get them views and trying to go viral will backfire on you painfully. That's my thing is you you can also you know you can say what you want to say you can curse me out I'll curse you back whatever do not ever ever try to invade my personal space <laughs> you know because that's when I, that's when I'm going to perceive a threat and he better be glad I have somebody who halfway thinks about something before I do it because that could have easily turn fatal. <laughs> now know? speaking of like I said, I, speaking of fatal, Mike. Uh, speaking of fatal. Um, there's a, a huge uh, uproar uh, that's going on now about the 14 year old kid shooting um, shooting a, a, a dude that hit his mom at a at a restaurant. Are are you familiar with that? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I heard I heard a little bit something about that. I haven't dug into the story, but yeah, I heard that on another uh, podcast I, I listened to. Like, yeah, yeah, you know. But my thing is, where where, where did the self was it? Like justifiable self defense, or yeah. Well, uh, I I looked yeah. at it before I saw the initial video. I mean, I I had a thought on it because the way the news portrayed it was like, here's this mother over here telling the son, uh, to shoot the guy, shoot the guy, and yada yada yada. Well, the video uh-huh. surfaced, uh, and I'm and for this. For this point of camera culture, I, I'm I'm kind of glad that the video did kind of surface because it puts more of the situation in uh, in complex. Exactly. I, I, actually, I, actually, I'm reading the story of the story right now. Yeah, emotions are going to run high, especially if it's your mom. You know, hey, you, I see a man hitting on my mom. It's on. <laughs> you know. Uh, however, uh, self self defense is a slippery slope if you're i mean you're in no under no obligation to flee if you're being attacked okay and most of these states are stand they have stand your ground laws but where it's where it gets kind of you know slippery at is i, I was reading where he was pursuing the man now he's you know it you know uh, eliminating the threat is what you should always do when you're being attacked but you shouldn't pursue that's when it becomes uh, if the guy gets killed, that's when it becomes premeditated uh, murder. You know, it has to be, you have to be in the act, but you should never pursue when you're defending yourself. If, you, if the threat is trying to run away, yeah, that that's when it's not self-defense. But, uh, yeah, there there's going to be, I best believe there's going to be some lit- litigation going on back and forth, especially with the, the guy whose deceased family uh, is, but, you know, and, yeah, hey, uh, number one thing, you know, keep your hands off people's mothers. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the way the story, the way the story proceeded, kind of like made the mother like lightweight the villain. Like, 
she called her son in there and told her son to shoot the guy and and this that and the third and the, and like you said the slope is where the guy was 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 running from the situation and and the young man kept shooting at her i mean shooting at him yeah they always said if the th if the threats if the threats back is turned and going away then the threat is leaving and you pursue that threat then that's where you took it upon yourself to continue the engagement. Put that coffee down. The mother and son uh, in the update, the charges that was brought upon them in the beginning is dropped. So mm -hmm. I, I'm assuming on a state level, maybe a city level or 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 whatever or whatever the situation the case or the the charges has been dropped now would the federal level come in and and probably pick it back up we don't know but as of right now yeah. as of right now the young man and his mother they're they're out of jail and they they are experiencing a little bit of peace but of course, this is going to be an ongoing situation because now the deceased uh, family is is probably going to come into the picture and probably probably call themselves to demand justice for their loved one. So we we have yet to see what else would go on uh, in this uh, in this situation. But yeah, the moral of that story is leave. <laughs> Men, <laughs> leave, leave the mothers alone, man. Every day for the last 10 years, Loretta there has been giving me a large black coffee. Today she gives me a large black coffee, only it's got sugar in it. A lot of sugar. I just came back to complain. How you boys put those guns down? Mike, man, I appreciate yeah. you coming on, bro. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much, man. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if any of you guys out there want to come on and share your stories or testimony or anything like that, or y'all want to come on and just chop it up with the lockout, man, y'all can do that. Y'all can reach out by hitting uh, the Gmail, Gmail, uh, lockout men podcast guests at gmail.com or you can uh, text the show, which is 216-600-2090. I'm, I'm, I'm always available. I'll chop it up with y'all either on or off the air. Big G's got it locked, boy. Won't you let me all night? Yeah, take me down. Won't you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Won't you to take it like a G? Yeah, don't make a